Alrighty, so in this video, we're gonna be looking at figuring out the equation of a plane in both vector and Cartesian form using three different examples and three slightly different techniques based on given information. So as you can see in the success criteria, we're gonna do one example where we've been given a point and a normal vector. We're gonna do another example with just three points on a plane. And the third example is gonna be when we've got two intersecting lines, but both lines lay on the plane. So let's get into the first one. So we've got for a plane pi, the vector minus i plus 5j minus 3k is normal to the plane and the point A with position vector minus 3i plus 4j plus 6k is on that plane. Find a vector equation and a Cartesian equation of the plane. So first things first, the vector equation of the plane and the Cartesian equation of the plane can come from the same formula and that is a dot n is equal to r dot n, okay? Where a is the position vector of any point on the plane, which we've actually been given here. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and highlight that. This vector here is going to be my a vector. So that's a position vector of a point on the plane. Our n is our normal. So we've also got in green here, the first thing that was, the first point that was read out, this is our n, which is our normal to the plane. We don't have to figure it out, it's just been given to us. And our r, r is always going to be just some arbitrary point on the plane, some position vector to an arbitrary point. So we can always just write r as x, y, z, some x, y, z coordinates of another point on the plane. And now we have all three components and we just really need to substitute them into our formula and apply the dot product to one of them. So when we substitute them in, I'm gonna use the column vector notation of the uh, vectors, but you could use i's, j's and k's if you prefer as well. So a, that's going to be minus three, four and six dot n, n is going to be minus one, five and negative three and I'll color code those just for clarity. And now that's going to be equal to x, y, z, dot the normal vector as well, minus one, five, negative three. Again, color coded. So this is pretty much our vector equation of the plane kind of just written out already. We can go ahead and just do the dot product of the two left vectors and get that scalar value. But this is gonna transition us into the Cartesian equation now as we do some more math. So on the left, when we do the dot product, we multiply the i's, j's and k's, multiply the components together. So we have negative three times negative one is just going to be three, plus four times five, which is going to be 20, plus six times negative three, which is going to be negative 18. We got 23 minus 18, which is five. So that's going to be five on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, when we apply the scalar product, we're just going to be multiplying the x, y, and z by those uh, values in the normal vector. So we get negative one x plus five y, minus 3z, and when we substitute them down below, we get ourselves the Cartesian equation of the plane. We typically, I suppose, we would write it in this order, minus x plus 5y minus 3z equals five. And there is our Cartesian equation. Our Cartesian equation of the plane with a vector equation the one above that's color coded where we just substitute the numbers in. All right, the next one up here is when we get given three points and we're asked to figure out the equation of the plane that contains all three points. And this is more time consuming, but no more difficult because the procedure is always the same. We essentially are going to find r dot n is going to equal a dot n. And we just have to be able to substitute into that equation. As always, r is just going to be our x, y, z vector to some arbitrary point on the plane. And our n is going to be our normal, which we don't have yet. We weren't given it in the question like last one. And our a is just going to be a point on the plane, which we actually already have. So we could just put any of the a, b or c coordinates in for consistency. Let's just use the point a, 0, 1, 1. And that can be our a, so really, by listing that information and by starting with, uh, starting with your vector equation of the plane, which is this guy here, whoops, it is, is, which is this guy here. Once you write that down every single time you're asked to find the equation of a plane, you just ask yourself, well, do I have A, a point on the plane? Yes, I do. Do I have 
R. Well, you've always got R, it's just X, Y, Z. And do I have the normal? No, I don't. Let's figure out a normal. So if we think about this, a normal is a vector that is perpendicular to the plane. And we have a technique in vectors which allows us to find a vector that is perpendicular to other vectors, which is the scalar product. So if I've got two vectors like this with my fingers here, in the middle here, the one that comes, if you do the scalar product with index finger one, index finger two, the scalar product, uh, sorry, the cross product, the vector product, not scalar, the vector product is gonna give you a vector that is perpendicular to both, for example, straight up or straight down. This is important because if we're looking for a normal vector, one that's perpendicular to the plane, we just really need to find two vectors that lay on the plane. And with three points, we can find two of those vectors. So to summarize that long-winded explanation, we're just gonna use those three points and find two vectors. So basically the vector between these two points. So I'm, you can do any three you'd like, but I'm just gonna figure out what the vector AB is, and I'm also gonna figure out what the vector AC is. You could do B, C, B, A, C, A, C, B, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. You'll still get the same vector, the same equations of the plane. So for A, B, that's going to be O, B minus O, A, which we're, I'm just going to do the math in my head. It's 2 minus 0, which is going to be 2. We've got 1 minus 1, which is 0, and 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. That's my vector A, B. For A, C, it's going to be O, C minus O, A. And similarly, we get minus two minus zero is minus two. Zero minus one is negative one. And three minus one is two. And that's my vector AC. So I have two vectors on the plane. Now I just have to cro vector cross product them together and get the perpendicular vector to them, which will be by definition, the normal to the plane. Because if both vectors are laying on the plane, the vector that's perpendicular to them must be perpendicular to the plane. So therefore, We've got normal n is going to equal the cross product of AB and AC, which is going to equal uh, 2, 0, negative 1, and minus 2, minus 1, 2. Now for the cross product, there's just a formula that's on our formula sheet. You don't need to memorize it. It's always going to be there. So just make sure you can reference it. I'll put a picture on the screen of the formula I'm using. There's multiple ways to do it, but I find this formula very easy. So uh, a two b three that's going to be zero times negative zero times two, which is just going to be zero, and then we're going to be subtracting a three b two. A three is negative one. B two is negative one. So that's going to be minusing positive one. And we've got a three b one, which is going to be minus two times minus one, which is two. Minus a one b three, which is four, so minus four, and a one b two which is going to be negative two, and minusing a two b one, which is again zero, so minus zero. So that's gonna simplify down to negative one, negative two, negative two, and that's my normal vector there. So now that I've done that, I've gone ahead and figured out the normal. I have all the information I need, right? My normal vector here, n, is going to be this one, which I can sub in now that I have it. I already had my a vector here, so that's part of my equation. And last but not least, we always have this equation R, which is just our X, Y, and Z. So we can go ahead, substitute into the equation, and then simplify it to get our Cartesian equation. So let's do that. But R dot N, which is going to be X, Y, Z dot product with the normal, which is minus one, minus two, minus two, is gonna equal A dot N, which is zero, one, one dot minus one, minus two, minus two. Simplify that down, we get negative x minus, uh, minus 2y minus 2z is equal to 0, 0 times negative 1, 0, plus negative 2, plus negative 2, and therefore minus x minus 2y minus 2z is going to be equal to negative 4. Now because they're all negatives, you can just multiply this entire equation by negative 1, which I will do to turn them all positive. So we get x plus 2y plus 2z is equal to positive four, which just is a little bit nicer to read and a little, a little bit easier to manipulate, which is good because we're about to manipulate it because part B of this, uh, of this question asks us to find the axis intercepts. Now in 2D plane, 
the axis intercepts, if you want the y intercept of a, a 2D plane, you just have to let x equal zero. If you want x e the x intercept, you have to let y equal zero. In a 3D plane, you have to let the other two equal to zero. So for the x intercept, I need to let uh, y and z equal zero. So I get down in this equation, by the way, this is the one I'm using here, I'm gonna have x, now if I make y and z zero, those are just gonna cancel out. So I'm just gonna get x equals four. Simple as that, that's the x-intercept. I've got uh, for the y-int, similar thing, I'm gonna let x and z equal zero. So I get two y equals four, and therefore y equals two. And for the z-intercept, Similar thing, let x and y both equal zero. I get two z equals four, therefore z equals two. So I have my three intercepts of two, two, and four, and it asks us to sketch the graph of the plane. Now when you're sketching a graph of a 3D plane, or rather it's a 2D plane on a 3D diagram on a 2D page, it's very hard to convey it. Of course, a plane goes in every direction for infinitely far. We can't obviously draw that. So the best we can do here is draw our 3D axes, right? Doesn't matter which one's on which, by the way, as long as you label them correctly. I'm just gonna write X, Y, and Z, but importantly, I'm gonna put the little plus up above them, show them that those are the positive directions. And X is four, I'm gonna say the full length is four. That means half the length of the other two must be two. And those are the intercepts. So I'm just gonna connect to those intercepts with an orange line to represent my plane. And this little triangle that I've created is going to be the representation of my 2D plane on my 3D Cartesian equation on my 2D piece of paper. It's the best we've got really, but just keep in mind, it does go in infinitely many directions for infinitely far. It covers the entirety of existence. Okay, example three. Okay, for the third example we're gonna go through it's telling us that there's a plane that contains two straight lines and they're in vector form here. And it asks us to find the plane that contains those two lines given that they intercept at a point. We're fortunate in that it tells us where they intersect at a single point. And because both lines lay on the plane, then that point's also on the plane. So this is actually going to be our A uh, vector, the position vector of A. We still need to know a normal vector coming out of these two equations. The vector equations that we're looking at, they contain, of course, a point on the line and also a direction of the line. But when it comes to finding a normal vector to the plane, I actually don't care where the vectors are. All I care about are their directions so I can find a cross product of those. It doesn't matter where specifically they are, I just want their directions. So these two blue underlined bits are gonna be the two vectors that I cross product in order to find the normal to my curve. So I've got A already, which is my one, zero, negative two. I've got R as always, which is gonna be my X, Y, Z. And I just need to find N, which I'm going to do by doing the cross product of two, one, one, which is this first direction here, crossed with one minus one minus two, which is this second direction vector here. So again, using that formula, a two b three is going to be negative two, and I'm gonna be taking away a three b two, which is negative one. Then I've got a three b one, which is just gonna be one. a one b three is going to be subtracting negative four. And then a1, b2 is gonna be negative two, subtracting a2, b1, which is just one, which simplifies down to now, negative two take away negative one is gonna be negative one. One minus minus four is five, and two, minus two minus one is minus three. There's my normal, and now I can substitute them into our normal, pardon the pun, our regular equation of a plane. So we've got x, y, z dot minus one, five, negative three equals one, zero, negative two dotted with the normal minus one, five, negative three. And finally, that's going to simplify to minus x 
plus 5y take 3z is equal to negative 1 plus 0 plus 6, which is going to be positive 5, so I get minus x plus 5y minus 3z equals 5. And there we go. Okay, so in this video we've covered how to determine the equation of a plane three different methods, but you'll notice every single method used this equation here that I'm about to highlight in pink. That's the equation of a plane. So really your goal, anytime you're asked for an equation of a plane, you're trying to figure out a point on the plane, that's A. You already know that R is just X, Y, Z, and you're looking for a normal. Usually that's by, actually always, it's by cross-producting two lines or two vectors that lay on the plane. Sometimes you have to do more work to get that, Sometimes you're just given it. In any case, hopefully that helped. And now you can calculate the equation of any plane.